Hi everyone, welcome to the Sew Essential vlog. I'm Lucy and I'm here today to show you the burrito method of sewing a shirt yoke. So it sounds like a lot of fun, it sounds fancy and let me tell you, it is. So it's a way of finishing a yoke in a completely machine sewn method. A lot of patterns will often tell you to machine sew the exterior yoke and then to hand sew the interior yoke because you'll often have a yoke finishing the seams at the shoulders and where the bodice joins the yoke on the inside and the outside. And lots of patterns will tell you to machine stitch the outside and then you hand stitch the inside one. But this method allows you to do the whole thing on the machine. It's really clever, but it's dead simple as well. It's really easy once you've got some good instructions to follow. So I've put those together for you today. I'll take you step by step through this method. I should add as well that there's lots of patterns out there that might have a yoke and just suggest leaving um, you know, an overlocked edge on the inside. And of course you could just cut out two yoke pieces and then apply this method to any pattern with a yoke um, on it. So yeah, that's just worth mentioning. It's a nice way to finish things. Looks super professional. I should mention that if you like what you see today and you find this useful, please like and subscribe to our channel because we do lots and lots of tutorials, offer lots of sewing tips and advice, but also lots and lots of sewing inspiration as well. So let's get started started. So here I have the back bodice piece of my shirt. I've tacked the pleats in place and then I've got two yokes. They're both exactly the same. One's for inside the shirt and one's for outside and I've used a fabric where it's very obvious which is the right and the wrong side so it makes it nice and easy for you to see how I'm putting things together. I'm going to start with one of the yokes and I'm going to lay it on top of the back bodice piece, right sides together. And that's going to be the yoke that's visible from the outside of the shirt. Then I'm going to flip those layers over and I'm going to position the yoke that's going to be visible on the inside of the shirt. So this time I want to position this yoke, right sides of the yoke to the wrong side of the bodice. So, just position that like so because you want the right side of the yoke to be visible on the inside of the shirt. And I'm going to sew all three layers together at the same time. You might prefer to do it in stages, that's fine. But I'm as long as you match up your centers and any notches and you make sure all three layers are accurately positioned and pinned, it, it'll be fine in most instances to sew all three layers together. If you've got any concerns about that, if you're working with a really slippery fabric or you're not a massively confident sewer, you can always just sew one yoke to the bodice first and then the other one. Just make sure you get them positioned correctly, like I've shown you. But I'm just going to sew this all in one continuous seam. So I've pinned all of that in place now, as you can see. And the right side of the yoke will be visible on the inside of the shirt as will the right side of the yoke on the outside of the shirt. So just take this over to the machine and we're going to stitch that seam as I've shown you. Now I'm going to just sew a few stitches in reverse to secure the stitching and I'm going to sew with the 5 8 seam because that's what my sewing pattern suggests. So just stick to the seam allowance suggested by your sewing pattern. And we're just going to go ahead and sew that seam 5 8 just making sure everything stays lined up nicely, all the raw edges are lining up nicely. And everything's staying in position as we sew. So we'll just whiz through that now. Sew the 5 8 seam. And again, at the end of the seam, just sew a few stitches to secure your stitching. So I'm just going to do a little reverse there just to secure my stitches. And there we go, we've sewn that first seam, sewn those three layers together. So now I'm going to cut the layers, trim them down. So I'm going to trim them down to probably about a quarter of an inch. And this just reduces the bulk and just gives us more professional looking results when we trim and grade our seams. 
So I'm just trimming the, that excess off there and then I'm going to take it and give it a good press. So I'm going to press the seam allowances up towards the yoke and I'm using my very well loved steam gener generator iron here. So we might fog up a bit but we're just going to give that a nice press, press those seam allowances up and then I can press from the right side as well just to make sure those seams are pressed accurately and everything's as it should be. There's a little bit of wrinkling there, I can press that later, but just making sure those seams are pressed nicely. You can see I've pressed those from the right side and then I can see that on the inside I need to press a bit more because my shoulder seams aren't matching up accurately so I just need to make sure that that seam is opened up accurately and fully and just give that a little press as well so that everything's lining up and matching up nicely. So that's it, we've got everything pressed now. You can see the seams are finished nicely. Now we're going to lay the bodice on the table with the internal yoke hanging down. So the internal yoke is hanging down away from the external yoke. And then we're going to take our front bodice pieces and we're going to position those right sides together at the shoulder seams where the external yoke is. So we're matching the external yoke shoulder seam to the front bodice shoulder seams. And we're just going to pin those two layers together. We're not doing anything with the internal yoke at this stage. We're literally just pinning the external yoke and the front bodice pieces together at the shoulder seams. So again, just make sure everything lines up nicely and accurately and pin those in place. There we go, and I've still got that internal yoke is hanging down, that's out of the way, we're not doing anything with the yoke that's going to be on the inside of the shirt at this stage. So take that across the machine and we're just going to stitch the shoulder seams in the usual way. Again, use keep that internal yoke out of the way, we don't want to be doing anything with that at this stage. And just so in the normal way that you would, make sure you do your reverse stitches to secure everything. Make sure that you're following the seam allowance suggested on your pattern. And just stitch those shoulder seams in place. So you're simply sewing two layers of fabric here. And the shirt's really going to start taking shape after this stage. And again, at the end of the seams, just do your reverse stitch to secure everything. And we're going to repeat that now on the other shoulder seam. Obviously you've got two to sew. So we're going to do the same thing again. Just stitch those shoulder seams in place following the seam allowance suggested by the pattern, securing everything and we're getting towards the exciting part now so once you've stitched those in place we're almost there. So now I'm going to lay the shirt on the table with the internal yoke hanging down. So that's hanging down and I'm going to lay the rest of it flat on the table and then this is the fun bit. You're going to start to roll the front and back bodice pieces. You just want to roll them up like you can see I'm doing here towards the yoke and then you can see the internal yoke pops out underneath and is visible. And this is where the burrito comes in. So you lift that internal yoke up and over 
and you're going to pin that yoke at the shoulder seams to the bodice so you can see why it's called the burrito method because it does look a bit like a burrito and if you ask me I think it's just as exciting as a real burrito but yeah I just love this method I think it's so so clever so I'm now pinning the yoke shoulder seams together and obviously the the body the front body shoulder seams in there as well but you're not you need to make sure you don't catch any of that fabric that's forming the burrito filling so you literally just want the shoulder seams pinned together and you need to make sure you don't catch any of that fabric that is the burrito filling that you can see poking out at either end and if you've got a particularly thick fabric or a bulky fabric you know you need to be really careful of that but you can see I've just pinned the shoulder seams together and I'm keeping all of that fabric out of the way and then particularly when you're sewing as well I mean you can use your previous line of stitching um, to make sure that everything is stitched together and there's no visible stitches from your previous lines of stitching when you sewed your first shoulder seams together you can use that as a guide but just it's extra important when you're at this stage you just keep that fabric out of the way that filling that burrito filling keep that right out of the way because if you sew through that obviously you're going to have to unpick it um, it won't work you do just want to be sewing your shoulder seams together here so I'm just going to use my previous line of stitching as a guide there do my reverse stitches at the start and the end of the seam as usual and then onto the other shoulder seam just trimming off those uh, stray ends there and again being very very careful here just making sure that I'm not going to catch any fabric that I shouldn't I just want to be showing sewing the shoulder seams together and I'm going to use that line of stitching from my pre previous line of stitching as a guide and trim the, those threads off and you can see there the shoulder seams are now sewn and sewn together now for the really fun bit so you're going to take that burrito filling and pull it through the neck hole and this is where the magic happens so you're just going to turn it through the right way just keep gently putting the fabric obviously be careful with your neckline you don't want to stretch that out of shape if it's a fabric that might be liable to do that but just pull the pull the fabric through the neck hole and turn it out the right way and here you can see you've got your internal yoke is sewn in position everything's being machine stitched the right side of the yoke is visible on the inside of the shirt it looks lovely and neat and professional and then on the outside you've also got your yoke in the correct position so I'm just going to give everything a press now Now you can top stitch those seams if you wish but that's it you've finished you've sewn a yoke by the burrito method. So I hope you've all enjoyed that today I absolutely love that technique and I think although it looks incredibly professional and it sounds fancy once you've got your head around it following some good instructions it's actually really easy to create so I hope you feel empowered to go forth and have a go and use it for your next shirt pattern as I mentioned at the start of the video we do lots of those sorts of tutorials simple techniques as well beginner techniques plus sewing inspiration and ideas new pattern ranges fabrics you name it if it's sewing related we do videos about it on our YouTube channel so please like and subscribe and I'll look forward to seeing you next time.